And first we need to get some ice to store those reactions in. All the buckets are in the styrofoam containers. They're here next to the freezer. This is that small room. You can hear the minus 80 freezer. It's the small freezer room in between the two, uh, in between the two labs. This is where you get the buckets, not on the 310 bench. Put them back here when you're done, and I'll show you where to get ice. Room 221 of the, of the Woodstow building. This is also the same room where we have the autoclave. And the door code is 80688. So when you get ice, just always leave these on top so they don't get buried underneath. And uh, in our case, we don't need very much ice today, so we'll just fill it up like this. Level it off the top, maybe a little more. And again, Leave the scoops on top. Now this ice is crushed ice and it looks attractive to drink or put in some uh, beverage, but don't do it. There is a chemical into it that throws the taste of anything off and it really doesn't taste that good. <laughs> a, a trick that you should know with ice, if you put in a tube with uh, just like this, right, you think that it'll keep the tube cold and it will to some degree, but um, when we're working with the little amounts that uh, we are, there are uh, certain amounts of ice that are not touching the tube, or I should say there are pr pieces of the tube that aren't touching any ice. And um, the best thing to do to a is actually to, get, to add a little water to the ice and make something of an of a ice bath. Now you don't need a whole lot, otherwise it's going to, you know, the tube will start floating. But somewhere in there there's a happy medium where you have a, a slushy sort of um, pool of ice and then there's some water in there to, for good contact of the tube and this is the ideal way to put your tubes in ice and keep them cold. Basically we need to wash our dishes so we're rinsing it out. We don't need to use soap and water with this. It's a very soft, particularly if I do it, clean it right away. I know the sugar isn't going to stick to the sides here. And you can see this is four. I'm going to rinse it out one more time. And we'll call that clean. Now this is a little bit dangerous to hang on these things because those pegs, you know, it might fall. So often we'll lay this one to the side. Um, but other things that have been cleaned go on these pegs here. And once they're dry, they go into the glass cabinets where they belong. So now we've just put our media into the autoclave. Remember, we still we left out our uh, LB auger, but also we made something of a mess here. You might have noticed in the film that, or in the video that there was just powder going everywhere. And actually, we left quite a bit of dust on different things, so we need to wipe that down. First, I'm going to put this away where it goes. Okay, second, it doesn't take, you know, a hazmat hazmat crew to clean up that area. It just takes a little water and some paper towels is all. And not even soap. We just need to rinse down, rinse it or wipe it down so there isn't dust everywhere from our use of that scale. It just so happens that there's a lot of things that are little white powders, right? <laughs> there's a lot of white powder in that ca in that chemical cabinet and you never know what's been what's been used before you. And you don't want to have something real toxic either. A white powder that, and there are some of those floating around the lab. So we're just going to wipe down the different areas here. There's a lot back here, just to clean up our mess. Okay, gentle with the scale. I shouldn't be really move very uh, hard at all, and don't put your hand on top. Rest too hard. But we're going to wipe down some of these things that. The uh, LB media just get, gets everywhere, okay? So this might, yeah, I just want to video everything so the students need so they can get through this on their own. One of the aids that they might need, that you guys might need or can use, are these molecular cloning books. I have number three down. Um, but these books are very good references on protocols. Um, in particular, what I got this one down for is to look up the recipe for SOC media. Now. Volume 3 in the back has an, it has an appendix, and this one actually, this section is Appendix 11 on Bioinformatics. 
But if you go back, yeah. here's yeah. commonly used techniques in molecular cloning. Uh, enzymes used in molecular cloning media. So this tells us how to prepare even the amount, gram amounts, and I don't really have to do any thinking at all. 